What's going on everyone? So this is my ranking video of Terrence Malick's movies. This is for those of you who don't know and are you know new to my channel. What I do is I obviously review newer movies, you know, just like most YouTubers, but I also do director lists where I watch all of their movies, theatrical films, and then I rank them. I'm not including any short films, documentaries, none of that. Just specifically theatrical films. I've done David Fincher, David Lynch, Wes Anderson, the list goes on. But for this list, specifically Terrence Malick's movies that as of right now, he's done nine theatrical films and I'm gonna rank them from nine to one. And without further ado, let's get into it. Number nine, my least favorite of his movies, and that is Song to Song. Yeah, I really don't like this movie. Um, I'll say it right now, it's a movie that I feel like meandered way too long. Um, it was beautifully shot, but at the same time, really didn't have a story or plot to really match the beautiful imagery. Um, the acting also, whilst I love the cast, I feel like they're not really given much to work with, and it shows. And that's going to lead me to my number eight pick, and that's Night of Cups. Night of Cups has those same issues as my number nine to a song to song. It's unfortunate that these two movies, as well as even my number seven pick, which I'll get into in a second, it's a shame though that Night of Cups was that way because the trailer really did seem fascinating. But it's a movie that is more focused on um, the avant-garde of just people walking around, twirling around, instead of actually having ideas that mean something. And it stinks because Terrence Malick is such a talented filmmaker, but I feel like he kind of got carried away with, uh, you know, three straight movies. And that's why I'm going to get into the third movie. My third movie of his that I don't like, uh, that's number seven, that's To the Wonder. Honestly, seven, eight, and nine could be in any order, but I decided that when I was making this video to have it at this order. To the Wonder is much the same way as Night of Cups and Song of Song has the same issues, honestly. But I will say this. I think it will be remembered because it's the last movie that Roger Ebert reviewed before his untimely death. But besides that, I don't think it's going to be remembered. It's beautifully shot for sure, just like number eight and nine. But it has that problem of meandering and not really focusing on ideas. And what little it does focus on really doesn't seem fascinating to me personally. And that's why it's number seven. So now we're getting to the nitty gritty. So number six is a movie that I personally don't like. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm not, you know, I'm not someone that's like, oh, I'll never watch it again. Like, my number six is a movie that I would be down to rewatch just because, you know, when I did see this movie, maybe I was missing something. And that's my number six is Days of Heaven, which with is Richard Gere. Now, with number six, Days of Heaven, like I said, it's a movie that I watched and I felt like was too long, but I also really respected and appreciated with how well shot it was the acting that was displayed on screen, the sound design, the score, everything that I personally liked about Terrence Malick's filmmaking was on display, but I think it was just that me personally, I couldn't really buy the romance. I didn't get invested into it. And that's why when there was focus on it, I didn't find it that interesting. And I just was taken out of the movie. Um, you know, whenever it's focusing on nature and everything, it's beautiful and all, but it just kind of left me cold, unfortunately. And that's why it's my number six. Number five is a movie that if you were to show it to someone and told them at the end of the movie that it was a Terrence Malick movie, they probably would be pretty surprised. And that's my number five is Badlands. Badlands was his first movie. Um, stars Martin Sheen. This is a really good movie. This was a movie that when I saw it, I was like, wow, this is like 95 minutes long. It's tight. It's thrilling. And at the same time, it just has all the things that are the opposite of what you know Terrence Malick to be. It's well shot for sure, but it has this like dirty feel to it. The score kind of takes a back seat from what I recall. And at the same time, the acting is different. You know, it's definitely naturalistic like all the other performances that he directs, but it feels different in its style and approach. And I like that a lot. That was my number five. Number four is his most recent movie as of 2019, December. And that is A Hidden Life. Hidden Life is a good movie. I think it's a return of form, personally, after three duds, uh, which were, you know, my seven, eight, and nine picks, which was To the Wonder Night of Cups and Song to Song. It's nice to see a Hidden Life because it was really everything I like about Terrence Malick. His beautiful cinematography, his great sound mixing, uh, great narration, all of those things that I love about him is in this movie, and it's in top, tip-top shape, and I love it. So glad I got to see a Hidden Life in theaters, and I would... Highly recommend it. That's why it's higher up on the list. Number three is a movie that, much in the same way as A Hidden Life, 
I could probably put on at any time simply just for the cinematography alone, but I do get caught up in the story at times too, like when I think about it. Like when I think about my number three, which is The New World, I think about it with the cinematography and the score, but also I think about how interesting the story is and how it is pretty historically accurate, which I think is awesome because for most people, the story of like Pocahontas and John Smith is told through Disney's lenses, but with with the new world, it's told through a you know an artist's you know point of view, and he does it in a way that really feels authentic to the characters, and I really found that fascinating. And that's why it's number three. I do want to rewatch it though. I will say that. I've only seen it once. I do want to rewatch it. Maybe check out the director's cut as well. But it's my number three. I really dig it. But number two is a movie that I'm not gonna lie. My number two is actually the movie that got me into Terrence Malick, and I hated it the first time. I remember I watched it with my mom. And we both shut it off like 15 minutes into it. But I came back to it. And I've come back to it many times since then. And I am so, so glad, honestly. It's really helped me as a uh, film critic slash film buff. And that's my number two. It's the, uh, the Tree of Life. Yeah, I can't believe I shut this movie off 15 minutes into it. Maybe my 15-year-old maybe my self just couldn't really appreciate it. But all these years later... I really dig this movie. This is definitely one of the best movies of the 2010s, in my opinion. Even if you're not a big fan of Terrence Malick, this is a movie that the more you watch it, the more you appreciate what you're seeing on screen. But I will say this, as much as I'm saying that even if you're not a Terrence Malick fan, I will say that there's two kinds of people that watch this movie. The first kind of people are the ones that shut it off probably around 15 minutes, which was my earlier self. They find it boring, they find it dull, they can't really get into it. And then the second kind of people are the ones that hail it as a masterpiece, saying it's one of the best movies ever, and they really are in tune with what Terrence Malick is saying. I don't find there to be an in-between. I really don't. I've yet to meet someone that was kind of like, yeah, it was all right. There's people I've met that have said it was terrible, and there are people that think it's a masterpiece. And I honestly go with the latter, you know, in this category. Now, I will say this. Like I said, when I first saw this movie, I shut it off 15 minutes into it when I was with my mom. But I will say that I did rewatch it because of my number one choice. And my number one choice, if you're not a Terrence Malick fan, you're not probably not sure what it is. But if you are a Terrence Malick fan, you probably already know what my number one choice is. And it's my favorite war movie of all time as of right now. And that is The Thin Red Line. Yep, that's right. I own it on Criterion Collection. It's one of my all-time favorite movies as of, you know, the making of this video. I absolutely adore this movie. I saw this, I'd say, I'd say three or four years after I saw The Tree of Life for the first time. And it was because of this movie that I decided to give The Tree of Life a second chance, honestly. Because I was so blown away by The Thin Red Line. I didn't give it, like, the 5 out of 5 rating that I do now. But I gave it a really high rating. And I was kind of like, oh, wow, this is the same director that did The Tree of Life. So I decided to give it a second chance, and I'm glad I did, because here I am years later, we watched this trailer like multiple times, and The Thin Red Line, I think it's a movie that's the ultimate movie for both Terrence Malick fans and non-Terrence Malick fans. It's a film that both sides can appreciate, and I, I think that's awesome, honestly. Personally, I think this should have won Best Picture in 1998, but that's just me. I'm so glad Shakespeare in Love won. Uh, same part, Ryan, good movie, but this is probably my favorite war movie of all time. So what I always like to do, again, if you're new to the channel, you're probably not aware of this, but after I'm done ranking a director's video, I like to talk about his style and if I'm a fan of his or not. So I will say Terrence Malick, his style, if you don't know it by now, he does voiceovers, he has beautiful cinematography, uh, naturalistic lighting, as well as performances, and he's focused so much on nature, death, and oftentimes war. Like a lot of his movies have focused on that, and religion. These are all ideas that I think that he finds elusive almost because in all of his movies he focuses on them. Sometimes he meanders past them. Other times he really focuses in them. And I feel like when he focuses in on them, they're awesome. But I will say this. He's definitely a director that he's more of a hit for me than a miss, but he has had some misses. Before Hidden Life, he had three straight movies of his that I did not like. Tree of Life was great, but then he had, again, To the Wonder Night, a cup of song, a song, and then finally he had uh, Hidden Life. So, it, it, you know, out of five movies, he had three does for me of the past, you know, five movies he's made. I'm hoping he gets better, you know, in terms of being more consistent, but nonetheless, he's still a director I absolutely love. I love his style. I can understand why some people might not be a big fan of his, 
But I think that if you are into filmmaking, you should definitely check out his movies or even nature photography because he has his own style, he has his own vision, and he puts it on screen for all to see and criticize and either, you know, obviously criticize just for the sake of criticizing or love it. And I think that's really ballsy, honestly. So I give him props. But yeah, he's a director I like. Not one of my all time favorites, but definitely a director that's up there for me personally. And uh, yeah, those are my nine movies of his that I ranked. Um, again, as of December 2019. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What's your ranking of his movies? Let me know in the comment section down below. What's your favorite Terrence Malick movie? Again, rank them in the comment section down below. And who else should I rank? Haven't forgotten, I'm still going to be doing Lars von Trier. I know I've said that in a couple videos, but again, bear with me. That's a director that I'm taking my time with. He's not exactly a director that you just watch all of his movies straight up the way you do with certain other directors. So bear with me with that. But if there's any other directors you might want to see, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget subscription, notification bell, and I'll uh, catch you guys later.